a lot of times a lot of times when you're programming you want to just be able to get right down to checking some code or testing some code and stuff like that so you don't want to have to deal with the windows forms or the wpf so a lot of times when that is the case you just want to kind of test code you you use the uh, console application just to test some of your code and basically that's what we're going to do today we're going to work in the, the console application but also work with the time date and the time stamp uh, date time functions just to see how those work along with working in the console so when I first start my window uh, when when I first start up Visual Studio Microsoft Visual Studio I start my new project and I go to my Visual Basic and I go to my Windows desktop and then I go to the console I then make sure that I'm in the right name you know I name it properly and then I make sure uh, it's lo uh, the location is exactly where I'm at and I go ahead and let it create a new solutions right now I don't really care about this I'm using this for demonstration so I'm not really gonna name it but it's wise to make sure you name it and make sure it's in the right location when that's all settled I go ahead and double click that or I could have hit hit enter so when the console window first opens up you'll see that it's fairly simple it's just straightforward there's this console window here and then over here you have your solutions explorer with your solution and then your project here and in one solution you can hold many projects but right now we're just going to use one solution uh, with one project right now our, our, our the class that we're dealing in right now is called module.vb and all the code exists here as is with most uh, classes you have a what's called a constructor um, and that is this function here or this procedure here that runs immediately when the class is called so when I run this application this is the first thing that's going to run even if I have other functions and procedures down here uh, they don't run unless they're called by this one or called by something else that was once called by this now one of the confusing things with the console is that when you first run it you'll notice that it doesn't stay open so I'll hit run and it doesn't open and it closes immediately it actually did open but it's ex extremely fast and then it closes immediately well because in the console window you have to not just hit run you have to hit control F5 or start without debugging if I hit that then you'll see this window stays open and then it waits for me to hit the key to continue so with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started on looking at some of the functions that are available to us through uh, vb.net in regards to date times and times and stuff like that. So we're going to do a quick uh, subtraction of a date. Oh, no, I'm sorry, of a time, which the date is exactly the same way, but we're just going to do a time. So let's come up with the variables that we would need. I want the time to come from a string. So I'm going to go ahead and declare a string, uh, dem str start time and a lot of times I like to put the str in this case because we're dealing in the console and and there are no visuals to be able to help me know that this is a string and normally I would do that for buttons and objects and stuff like btn you know enter or something like that but because I don't have an interface I like to put the the camel casing with the definition of what I am using first just for clarity as a string and I'm gonna put uh, dim and I want an end time and then I'm gonna put uh, now we want to be able to have the date objects that those are going to go into so I'm gonna say start date sorry start time and I'll make this I'll make sure I put DT in front of that so we're dealing with a date time start and in. Okay. So now I'm going to dim those. And laziness right here. All right. So I have my strings and I have my date time. Uh, references that I'm going to be putting those strings in and the one thing you need to know about the date time is that the date time actually returns a date a, a time span it doesn't return another date time so knowing that we know that in order to retrieve this information into another variable we're gonna have to have a, a time span to be able to retrieve it so I'm gonna go ahead and when we're subtracting it that's what it returns a time span so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put DT for date 
time and time span. So I have a date, time, time span. That means I'm converting from a date, time, time span. And then uh, that's going to be as... Uh, So now that I set up all of my variables, now I want to declare all my variables. So in my main, remember we said when the application first starts, right now it does nothing. When the application first starts, it's going to run what's in here. So the first thing I want to run is setting up all of these variables. So I'm going to go ahead and pretty much copy this, get rid of the dim. And now I'm going to start declaring these. This string is going to be my time, and I'm going to make that... 12 a.m. and I'm going to copy that. I wouldn't be copying by the way. I'm just doing it for speed's sake. You guys really should be typing this stuff out in order for you to get better. So um, I say 12 p.m. to, to uh, 5 a.m. That's how long they, they've been working. So the end time, the start time, and the end time. Now I want to go over here to my DT start date. And this is a date time, so I need to I need to um, instantiate this thing. And the way I'm going to do that for now, don't worry about exactly what all this means. Just go ahead and do this: new date time. Uh, and then so this one's also going to be a new date time. So I have two date times. All right. So now down here we have time span, and that's going to be actually this time span is actually going to take both the subtraction of these two dates. But before I do that, what I need to do is convert this into a date time. And the way I'm going to do that is actually use something called a convert. So I'm going to stick the, this date in here. And I'm going to stick this date in here, but I have to convert them first. So first I'm going to say this equals convert and then it's uh, to date time and then I go ahead and put the string in there str string str start time and I'm gonna do the same thing for the end time uh, that's not what it says I misspelled it up here so I, I probably should fix it. Alright, so now I have a start time and it's being converted from the string and I have an end time that's being converted from the string. Now that I converted them, now I can subtract them. So now what I'm going to say is this dt, uh, DT time span is equal to end date, so I can get the difference between the date. I'm sorry, not end date, uh, DT end, date time end, oops, so DT end, and this function, this function comes with all date times, the subtract and add and multiply, you can multiply months, as we can see here, we can multiply ticks, add and do all these sort of things, we can add days, weeks, months, takes them away, compare them, so it's really uh, a good thing to be able to, to do this this way, as opposed to trying to parse this out yourself, and taking care of that when it's already done for you, so I'm going to say that's subtract, so I'll go here, dot subtract, and then I'm going to subtract the start date, so this is the start date. So now that should return everything that we want. Now I want to see what's inside of here. So I'm just going to go ahead and council right line. I want to see it printed out basically. Council right line. And I'm going to do the DT time span. So there we have it. Let's see if it works. I'm going to hit Control F5 to run this. And, and it says negative. It says negative 7. Let's see about this. Let's 
So let's see if, if it still does that. Yeah, it's working. There we go. So that's how you can subtract times. And you can subtract dates. And by the way, this also works even if I don't put a space in there. So I still get 5. And if I were to change this, it's going to parse that. And as you see, I get 1 hour. 1 hour difference. So before it was going backwards, so that's why it was negative. So if I go like this, this should say zero difference. Yep, there's zero difference between those two times. And there you go. You learned a little about learning uh, using a console. And you also learned about setting up dates and times to be able to subtract them or add to them or multiply them. And then spit them out into a time span and then print them out to the console or any other place that you want to print it out to. Even if it was a text box or something like that. A lot of times you can use this in games and stuff when you really want times to be added and subtracted. If you want it to be related to real time or the clock. So I hope this helps. Talk to you guys later.